Okay, we are on. My name's Lori Kern. I'm with Quilters Headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, working from my home studio today. Today we are going to work on Block 1 of London Blues by Wing in a Prayer. So this started out to be a block of the month and then the COVID virus hit. Today is May 25, 2020, and uh, it's Memorial Day. And so we started to, we had the schedule to start in April, I believe, as a block of the month and people would come in and sew with us. And because of the virus, uh, I decided we're just gonna get it started online and do videos. So it's, it's kind of sad, but uh, I didn't know how long this is gonna last and I still don't. So welcome students. We're gonna work on block one today. So we're pairing those and get these things out of the way. Pairing these, those two pair and these two pair. Okay, so you may have seen on one of my previous videos that I have fallen in love with this um, diagonal tape. Uh, I will put the link down below uh, where to get this. We have it at our store, of course, so you can get it online at quiltersheadquarters.com. I have it right here taped onto my machine. I'm going to follow the quarter inch line on each side so I don't have to draw lines down the middle and draw a line down each side and sew on the lines. I'm just going to put my presser foot right here on this quarter inch seam and we'll just do some chain sewing. So it's easy peasy. There will be no no um, drawing lines. So I'm going to put the corner right here on the side of my presser foot and follow the other corner right here on this line. Okay? Does that make sense? You'll see when I do it. Okay? So, I always start with leaders and enders, then I don't get boogers on the bottom. So like I said, this corner is going up at my quarter, on the edge of my quarter inch foot. I get a bite and then I'm going to line this corner up with the quarter inch line here. And I will just keep doing that all the way down with all of my squares here right sides together. It makes easy work of everything. I should say easy play. I'm liking this tape. I, I'm kind of keeping it on my machine at all times. So when I was recording this before, I had black thread in here. So it was a good opportunity that the phone died and I could change my thread colors. So again, I'm putting the corner of my block on the side of my quarter inch foot. I get a bite or two in and then I follow the quarter inch seam line down here with this corner of the block. Okay. And I just chain piece. I had all of my uh, my fabrics 
paired already. Oh, by the way, I am not using the London Blues, in case you're wondering why my fabric's not blue. Since I already made a London Blues quilt for the store, I didn't want to make another blue quilt. So I am using Plant Kindness line of fabric by Henry Glass. So there's those. I always use a leader and ender. Prevents thread boogers on the bottom. And I also like my handy dandy um, cutting gizmo by Gips Gypsy, I believe. The gypsyquilter.com. So I can cut them all apart. Oh have links to the on the bottom of this video you can check for buying the diagonal seam tape and the cutting gizmo see how fast that was pretty cool and then I'm going to go ahead and cut those apart all right now I normally don't do two at a time but I feel pretty safe that I can lay my ruler down corner to corner and I can cut two and a half at once I feel pretty safe doing that get my corners together it looks pretty good Can't see the line on that, but I did actually sew it. It's a little different doing all of this on camera. I can't really see unless I stand up that it's um, filming right, but before I got going on this, I made sure that if I'm right around the QS for Quilters Select, I know that I'm on camera, unless I've missed my camera, but I'll check it every now and then if I slid my camera away or something. All right. So then the next thing we got to do is press these all either open or to the side. Let's see if she tells us. She doesn't tell us which way to press. I'm going to press open. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so the next step our directions tell us is to square up our, our half square triangle units to two and a half inch square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now normally you guys would see me using the tucker tr trimmer, but it's um, a little bit big. So I'm just going to use my quilter select here. I got it handy and I don't have a lot of space here. So I just line it up here, two and a half inches here. You guys all know the drill how to trim. All right, so I'll be back when I get the rest of them done. Okay, I'm back and I have all my blocks trimmed up to two and a half inches. These are my 11 and 9s, 9 and 3, and 11 and 3 fabric numbers. And so now the task is to make four each of these doodads. So these are going to be like so. Let's see here. Fabric 9 and 11. 9 and 11, 4 of each, so like that, 9 and 11 like that, 9 and 3 like that, and 
11 and 3 like that. So I'll get these sewed together and we'll be right back. fast forward through this part. Had a little mishap there, had broke my thread. And then it sounded funny, so I had to rethread the bobbin. Always listen to your machine. You know, I don't have my light on very bright. Turn that one off. This one. That's a little bit better for me. Take it over to the sewing or the iron and I'm gonna press them open. Okay, I said I was gonna press open, but then I decided not to because I want my two seams to nest here. So just like that. So one is folded this way and the other one's folded that way. And then and slide them right up to one another and just nest them perfectly. Can you see that? I don't know how good the light is. All right, so that's how we're going to sew those together. Get them all laid out. I usually match up my middle and then hope the ends end up right and they usually do this is another one of my favorite tools is my stiletto my bamboo stiletto i don't know i just got used to using it when i had this old sears sewing machine and then i had another brand I won't mention names, but it always veered off to the left and I had to somehow steer my fabric. So that's when I really got used to to uh, using my stiletto. And now I kind of like it. I just keep, you know, use it to keep my seams turned correct and uh, pick up my fabrics. The less you handle it, the less they fray. So by using my stiletto, they don't fray so much. Keep them lined up with my stiletto. Last one. So on to my ender. And now I'm going to press this seam open. Okay. These came out pretty good. They meet nicely in the middle. I pressed these seams to the side, but I pressed the others all open. Okay, so we're making this corner square here, ah, right here, this corner block. So we're gonna add triangles to three corners only, not four. And so I'm going to show you two ways to do it. You can do it as the direction she said, and that's what we'll do first. So, oh, I should have, I should have cut two more, but you'll get the idea. Yeah, I should have cut 
one more two and a half inch square. But this is how we're going to do this one. All right. So what they tell you to do is um, sew from corner to corner, just like this. Well, again, I've got my handy, da da handy dandy diagonal seam tape here. So I'm going to put my needle right at the corner here and follow this line right here down the center, right to this corner. All right. So here we go. So right under the needle there, I get a, a bite right there. And then right here, I'm following the narrow, the red line right here. So I don't have to mark anything and I still get it perfectly sewn right down the middle. Okay. And then you just flip that back. And if you sewed it perfect, you are going to have a perfect folded corner. So I'll do the other corner. Let me uh, trim. Now normally I will not trim the background fabric just because that is my true straight uh, square. And, you know, I didn't sew it exactly perfect, so I'm just going to trim out the bottom. Just like that, okay? I'll do a little finger pressing, and I'll sew the next corner. All right. And again, I'm just going to sew from corner to corner, get that corner right in under my needle, get a bite or two right there, lining it up on my red line, and follow the red line as I go. I need another ender. Don't know what I happened to my enders. I always use enders. All right. Okay, so I'll fold that back. Two down, one to go. Let me go cut one more two and a half inch square. All right, one more. And then we'll have, oh, let's see. I want to trim this part out first though. You can see I'm not sewing it just perfectly. Doing my best. It's hard to do it uh, on camera. I'm trying to hurry and get her done and not make mistakes. Believe me, we're going to edit out the mistakes I've made. All right, so now I'm going to put this under my needle and sew from here to here. off all right so this is the block we're looking for of course yours is going to be blue the other way you can do it is with the corner pop tool okay when all else fails read the directions so the directions say a two and a half inch square which means two inch finished and so after reading the directions with the corner pop tool I'm glad I didn't cut it because you want to use the two inch cutaway, the two inch cutaway on your square, not the two and a half. All right. Our folded corner size that wing in a prayer tells us is two and a half. Well, that's an unfinished size square, meaning that the seam allowance hasn't been sewn into it yet. So we want to cut away two inches. All right. And two inches here. Let me just do half the other, the opposite end just for now. OK. 
Okay. Slipped a little bit and didn't quite cut it all. All right. I'll cut the third one in a minute. All right. And then the directions say to cut this in half. So this is my three and a quarter inch square. We're going to cut in half. So what this does is it gives you a little extra fabric so that you can trim your block to an exact four and a half inches. All right. So let's see. These are the two sides I trimmed away. So I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam. I just eyeballed it, just centered it, quarter inch seam right here, and then I'll do the same on this side. Again, I'll just eyeball it, center it. Okay. And I'm going to press it this way. All right. Okay, so the next step would be to trim away a third side, which is going to be like so. All right, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So there's my two, two inch line in one corner. So all I want to trim away is one corner. Remember, we're only sewing to three corners. All right. So, and I'm just eyeballing this as well. I think I'll slide it down the middle. It's kind of hard to tell the middle. All right. Looks good. So then the next thing I need to do is square this up to four and a half inches. Because I have three corners, I could do it one of two ways, or one of three ways actually. I could line this up with my four and a half inch on the corner here that would work and then trim all the way around or i could use my square and a square ruler and trim it up with my four and a half inch line here and then these would also be lining up but it's really i've got a whole bunch of junk over here that you can't see so instead of using my square and a square, which I would highly recommend, I'm just going to use my little six and a half inch non-slip ruler by Quilters Select. And so my four and a half inch line is right here. And I'm going to line that up on the good corner that hasn't been trimmed off yet at four and a half by four and a half. So, oh, that's three and a half. Let's get to four and a half. So I've got a four and a half here and a four and a half here. So I'm just going to square this up just like we normally would. And I like doing it this way because no matter how I um, 
sewed my corners on, I can still trim it up. Now that's a good corner, so I'm going to lay my four and a half inch on this corner that I just trimmed up. So four and a half here, four and a half here, and this is going to line up perfectly over here. And I'll trim this off. So it's kind of a long way around doing it, but it's perfect, right? That's perfect. My other one, I haven't trimmed out this middle one yet. Here, I'll do that real quick. Careful not to trim too much. So this one as well is perfect, but I do have, you know, a little bit of extra right there where I didn't sew it perfect. So I've got extra layers. And it seems a little bit wonky. I'll be able to manage it. It'll be fine. But it is a little, a little off square. So I do prefer doing it this way with the, you know, cutting that corner off with the, the corner pop and sewing them perfectly that way with a little bit extra so I can trim it down. That's my preference. But you guys do it whatever is easiest for you. Do a little bit of chain piece in here. Okay, I'll take them over, give them a quick press, and trim the other corner. Quick press. Okay, I'm going to trim these up just like I did before. 
four and a half inches by four and a half inches here and here turn it around to my good corner that I just trimmed turn the rest up start with my good corner right here that I haven't touched so you don't waste a whole lot turn it around this is the corner I just trimmed right here probably notice I can slide this around on my mat this is a quilter select mat and a quilter select ruler it has a non-slippery side so it grabs hold of the fabric but the mat is slippery so I can grab hold of the fabric and slide it around without losing my placement which I really do like about quilter select that is all available on my website as well at quiltersheadquarters.com. So, yeah, I can trim one side and turn it a little bit, trim the other side. Makes it easy peasy. All right. So the next thing we have to do, guys, is just lay out our blocks, sew it together. Oh, I'm so dumb. Look at that. I made five corners. Now I have to go cut another center block because I made a corner block out of that one. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with my four and a half inch um, center square which is fabric five and it says you're supposed to fussy cut well apparently i probably did fussy cut one of these guys like maybe this one but since i used it for my corner i'm not i'm not worried too much about the fussy cutting for this square or for this quilt because i'm not using the blues fabric for a second time so i am going to lay this out like so like the directions say you might not be able to say see the whole thing but you'll get the idea and then this goes this way all right so all we have to do now is just sew our block together I hope this has um, been interesting for you, mistakes and all. This is going to be really, really pretty. So I'm excited about this color as well as the blues. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show it to you when I get her done. Okay, there's my finished block. So when I was sewing each row together, I pressed the top and the bottom row that way towards the outside. And when I press the middle row, I press towards the center. But then when I sewed all the rows together, I pressed open. Okay? So I hope that helps uh, getting your first block done on London Blues. I'll get block two out there as quick as I can. And I'll talk to you all later. Uh, please don't forget, I'm going to put this up on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe. Block two will be coming as quick as I can and then from there on out probably uh, each block each month or faster if I can get them done all right so thanks for joining us please subscribe like our video and um, we'll see you next time